Cool. Here we go. Here we go. Um, so what's, uh, what's the whole like status with like work right now with you and like COVID? Um, how is it affecting the company? Uh, okay. So generally during this time, we're like packed full of work. Everyone's on overtime, like the whole company and you know, we have more work than we can handle. Um, but with this COVID now, it's like, we're, we're, we have just barely enough work, maybe two or three days buffer worth of work. So, you know, I'm grateful for that, wow. uh, you know, but there's no overtime. Uh, but you know, you but know, hasn't mean, overtime, like not having overtime, doesn't that like help with the profits of the company? Because you're, as you're working day to day, it's not, you're not going into overtime. So it doesn't eat into the margin. No, no, no. Okay. So how we, how, uh, I, how I structured the, the business is, um, uh, so the base salary is, is not that high for everyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, because we do that because it's a seasonal, uh, uh, um, industry, um, you know, during the summers it's low and then during uh, Christmas it's peak. Right. So we do that so that when we have low work or during uh, low season, uh, we, we can get by. Right. And then for peak season, uh, we give our employees double overtime. So, um, so any money that we, uh, get from overtime goes straight to them. So we don't lose, or it's like just barely, uh, break uh, even for the, over right. yeah. So, so generally it's this time where they usually reap the benefits and they love it. They love working overtime to get that double time. Right. And they make a lot more than, uh, what, what normal so people would make. So it sort there. of makes, makes up for the times that it's kind of like quiet. L lean. Yeah. 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 Lean so, so. Yeah. 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 So that's how we structured it. So, you know, I mean, so right now because of COVID, the, you know, the, the, the troops here don't have the opportunity, you know, to, to, to get that big catch that they usually get during this time. So, you know, that's kind of a bummer, but you know, they understand that that it's better to have some work now than versus, you know, like being laid off or the company going down. So how are the other um, shops in your industry doing in Vietnam? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, some, you know, it, there's fluctuations, but I get the feeling work is kind of scarce among all of us. There have been like, so there's about maybe 10 to 15 VFX companies that I know of in Vietnam. Uh, it's, and, and it's heartbreaking because two of them reached out and said, Hey, if you have any work, give wow. it our way. Uh, cause we're hurting. And, you know, I wish I had extra work. I would give it to, you know, but you know, we're barely like breaking even ourselves right now. So, wow. you know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it sounds like a pretty tight knit group of um people in your industry in vietnam like we, i mean for other I, companies to reach out to you uh yeah, yeah well i mean it's we're 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 like kind of like a, a different situation i guess because um uh we do the paint and roto so we're very specialized in in that area and everyone else is doing comp so we're uniquely uh positioned where we help all the other companies out you know, and, and but I don't know among them if, if they're competing, you know, um, but for us, we have, it's a common denominator that we, we service all of them. So, yeah. So that's why they're, 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 they're cool with this. And we don't try to like, uh, you know, Step on each encode, other's yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Each other's work. So yeah, can yeah. you tell me like how it all started um, for you? Because it sounds like it, it's been a gradual progression throughout the years. I mean, like, what was it like? How did you get started uh, in Vietnam? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, I came back in 2004, um, and I had, what was you know, the landscape of, uh, animation or any of that digital effects when you came in 2004? Yeah. So I remember in 2004, I was, uh, you know, here, there's none of, you know, no VFX, nothing of that sort or animation. And, um, I remember, uh, staying at, uh, uh, our auntie's, uh, uh, house and the kids were watching a channel, right? And I remember uh, the Disney Channel was just starting to roll out in Vietnam, and what? And I remember what? What? what is it, was it on a network or was it? Yeah, it's on... some. I, I, no, it was on a Vietnamese local television, but they were like airing some Dis Disney stuff where they licensed oh. it, or I can't remember what it was, but uh, you know, and and uh, you know, uh, the the aunt was saying, uh, yeah, you know, like you know, this is new, and the kids loved it, right? And I'm like, and I'm thinking. Uh, you know, and I asked her, does Vietnamese have any animations, you know, as I was always interested in that, because obviously I went to school for animation. And uh, she goes, no, nothing, you know. And the more I looked into it, the more I was like, oh, this is, there's none of this. So in the back of my head, there was always like, 
thought, this is an open market, you know, and it would be cool if there was like some type of animation uh, in Vietnamese. So, you know, uh, I lived in Vietnam for two years and then, uh, you know, people started approaching me to do VFX stuff, but I, you know, I always wanted to do an animation studio. So that's what we opened up Vietnamation in 2006. And okay. So that's why, yeah. So for two years, what did you do? Uh, you, well, I helped out with the, you know, the family factory and, and just, uh, you know, I think, made it on yeah. The side. Yeah. And then, yeah. So yeah, uh, there was an article that, you know, of our friend, uh, Aaron had, uh, you know, his friend at the time, uh, she worked at Mao Tanning and she heard that I worked on uh, Polar Express. So they wanted to do a, a what newspaper. Did you do, what did you do on Polar Express? Uh, for the Polar Express, we did the motion capture for, you know, I worked at Giant Studios and uh, we did uh, all the uh, motion capture, the motions for the, all the characters on, on the Polar Express. Uh, you know, so, um, you know, so she heard about that. And so she wanted to write a, an article about me. Right. And when, when that came out in Vietnam, all the filmmakers, and, yeah, and that, that article kind of like blew me up more than uh, what I really was. You know, I was just like a technical motion capture editor type guy. Uh, but it made me sound like I was like the VX, VFX extraordinaire, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, and it, the title of the article was uh, the first Vietnamese to, to go to the, the South Pole, which was kind of, you know, over. But anyway, um, so all these filmmakers in Vietnam contacted me and uh, you know, that's why I met uh, Lu Huynh and he, you know. We, did they have a contact number on the article? I mean, how did they reach out to you? No, so yeah, and, and Min, uh, you know, Min from Dauphim uh, contacted Bao Tan Ning, contacted the, oh, the, wow. the, yeah, the news, uh, that, that the girl who wrote the article and she, you know, gave him my number and, you know, he contacted me and that's, you know. Wow, and, and it, so interesting. Yeah, yeah, and then from there, like, Everyone started wanting to work with me, but you know, I, I at that time it was funny because I had I, I never done any VFX ever, you know. But the pressure was so on, and uh, you know, I, I wanted to do it, and uh, you know, we we're on a laptop, um, so I knew the software, but I just never did it. What, what kind uh, so, of early work did they ask you for? What what was the kind uh, of work that they so, from you? So there was a scene uh, where uh, they filmed. Uh, the husband and wife in a boat, but it was on a lake or, or something. But uh, the director wanted it like violent and like, get on the ocean, you know, like waves and dying, you know. So uh, this is in 2006 and I had a laptop and, and, you know, so we did like 11 or 12 shots, changing it from the lake to wow. the, uh, you know, violent river. And it was crazy. And this is for, we did, for a yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it took us like almost a year to do those 12 shots. Like, on, made by, on one yeah. laptop. Well, and then, you know, we start off with one laptop and then, uh, you know, eventually I got help. Uh, uh, maybe like six months down the road, we start uh, with two other computers. You know, uh, <laughs> it was crazy. We wrote a scope in Photoshop, which back then there was no tools, nothing available. And wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, all of that could have been now today uh, could be done by one person about no about a week, one person in wow. about a week. But back then, uh, that team eventually built up to like five, six people. And it took us like a year to do, you know, so pretty crazy like the amount that of that is yeah. insane yeah, wow yeah. and this was 2006 six yep 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 yeah wow yeah it's mind blowing to 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 think about how far you know not just you but the whole industry has come from yeah. you know 14 years ago i mean yeah i mean the insane. tools are amazing now like even some of the wave the water is like it's easily real time stuff now you know where it, it took like about you know a couple of weeks to render one scene back then all that stuff all that stuff is is real time now as we speak you know and you can do it on a laptop in real time too so as the work was um being done uh in that year working with luhin film like what other kind of work came in um uh, so yeah, that. at the time, yeah. So at the time, um, we were taking on little, uh, shows like Vina Ace Cook, like noodle, uh, commercials, Milo, you know, like little milk cartons jumping around, hopping yeah. around, stuff like that. That was stuff, you know, that, uh, you know, I, I, I could it's do fun. easily cause it's animation and fun. Yeah. 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 It's just the VFX part that was, uh, you know, had a high learning curve and it took yeah. me a while, you know? Yeah. 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 Wow. And then, so as the work started coming in, you were expanding your crew and you're expanding your. Um, your technical kind of know-how, right? And then yeah. what kind of like inspired you to take like one direction or did you kind of like 
keep it your mind open so where to go so, or how did it go? yeah i mean i mean you know so uh, so as you know we 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 uh spent a, a big amount of money buying a motion capture system because i still wanted to to do animation you know that was my thing in, in vietnam uh but um, all the animation jobs in Vietnam, we just kept losing money or it was just always uh, uh, either break even or negative. Why? Vietnam, I think economy versus uh, the infrastructure. Now, when I look back at it, the infrastructure just wasn't there. You need a good storytelling team. You need a good marketing team, you know, and, and, and all of that stuff. And I was naive to think, oh, if you just did a good animation, uh, you know, it would go viral. But it's very difficult. You, you need a whole... Uh, infrastructure in place, uh, proper IP, you know, all that thing, you know, all those things. And, what and is proper I just, IP? Uh, something that everyone already knows, or yeah. someone has already put a lot of money into uh, de in developing it and, and making it solid, so that so you it's make like sure basically it's, taking branded content and kind of like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, it's it's a chicken or the egg, but one of them's got to uh, be strong first, right? Mm, right. right. Um, yeah, and and I wasn't even fully aware that you needed either or of that. I just thought if you did like a beautiful animation, you know, and we did a lot of beautiful, yeah, we did a lot of beautiful animation, but it just, it never took off. It, yeah, you know, fun. there's no, yeah. yeah, there's no emotional connection to anyone, you know, so you need a lot of money to, to, to get into people's, uh, uh, you know, consciousness, yeah. consciousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I did yeah. not know that. We're not yeah. aware of it. Yeah. And, and even if you could create like cute characters and, and, and cute imagery, you need a good script. You know, and, and, and I didn't know that. So, you know, it was all these lessons that you uh, learn along the way. Like, way wow, yeah. just, yeah, to, to make a good animation successful, it takes a lot of money. Yeah. So you were doing um, sort of this work for hire, um, mm -hmm. getting all of this VFX stuff, and then you were creating your own original content at the same time. And then yeah. when did it, where, where did you veer off and sort of take the, you know, heavier sort of uh, road down to, in VFX? Okay, so yeah, I mean, I, I kept trying to take on animation work, but VFX just kept getting in, you know, just kept coming in, just kept coming in, because we were getting good at that. And, I, you know, in around 2000, I think from 2009, 10 to 2011, we pretty much did most of the VFX for, uh, you know, films in Vietnam. Um, and, and that allowed us to get more people, but still break even. But, you know, uh, and, you know, we slowly grew our crew, uh, you know, uh, we started off with, three or four people in 2006. And then by 2009, we had 20, 15, 20. And then, you know, by 2011, we were up 40 people. Um, and so, you know, just, and then, you know, from uh, America, you know, with Studio 8 uh, FX. Um, How did you meet those people? Uh, well, you know, Fo connected us, our friend Fo, you know, from USC and our, our buddy uh, connected us with Over Andy. at IDG. Uh, yeah, 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 with Brian. Brian and Andy, um, and so they were looking for uh, a partner in Vietnam, and so it was a, it was you could say it was like a, a good match, you know, match made yeah, in heaven. What, what year was that? Uh, we connected in two thousand eight. Two thousand eight, and then how many people yeah. did you have working for you at two? At that time, only fifteen, I think. 15. Fourteen, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, we took on a couple of jobs. It was bumpy at first because we didn't, you know, I American mean, quality. Okay. American quality is completely different than what we were used to here, and. So we, we had a lot to learn, but I think by 2009, we finally, I remember got approved for our first job and we were so happy after like three or four uh, failures, you know, like yeah, tests. What, yeah. what, what were the, what were the difficulties? What were the failures at the time? Uh, there was a lot, but uh, not using industry standard software, mm. you know, like the client would say, Hey, can you deliver in this? And we're like, what is that? You know, um, <laughs> color space. We didn't have no idea what the, uh, you know, we were delivering in the wrong color space. Um, oh, even, wow. even, even with rotoscoping, you know, like we thought it looked okay, but the edges were jumpy, you know, and, and, and India was ahead of us a couple of years, you know, and, and so they had been doing it for like, I think even more than a couple of years. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, after three or four clients with, with heavy feedback and, and, you know, uh, some were polite, some weren't, we, you know, we slowly caught on. And I remember, uh, the first job where the client goes, good job, this is great. You know, we were so happy that, that you know, uh, we, we had a connection to the U.S. And, and from there, uh, it just kept growing. It took off, yeah. yeah it was yeah, yeah. lucky that you found somebody in the U.S. that had faith in you and, you know, wanted you to grow with them. 
right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Andy, Andy's been there with us through thick and thin, and and and, and helped yeah. us. Yeah. What What exactly did Andy do to kind of make your, I guess, technical life easier? Um, because I'm I'm imagining that you were using uh, sort of really slow technology. I mean, what did he do to kind of like? Uh, so yeah, I mean, he used to work in uh, a company, uh, Pacific title data i can't remember the name of it pacific something uh which was a big vfx company too and he used to work there um and then so him and casey uh you know decided to say hey you know like there's still a demand for this uh and you got connections to vietnam and so he would still he would go around and contact his old buddies and friends and goes, hey what software are you guys use hey you know and, and ask for us and, and yeah and, and get these uh information for us and and, and pipe it back to here and wow. from there, we piece together and 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 figure out the whole uh, pipeline to, to go back. Yeah, it, it's crazy yeah. when you think about sort of like the lucky kind of things that happen in life. It, just yeah. having the right person there at the right time yeah, helps yeah, you yeah. inch along. And without that kind of like that that little thrust, yeah, you know, it's harder to kind of like move around, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean. I, I definitely think success is 50% luck and 50% hard work, you know, yeah. and, and when that hard work uh, meets the luck, then it happens. Yeah, because you hear that all the time, but it's like a cliche yeah. almost, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. having yeah. Um, Andy just show up, uh, what, 2008, you said? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so then what happens after he shows up? I mean, so you start getting some work and then what happens and you know, um, what's the whole uh, story after he shows up for the next few years? Yeah, so we did a lot of, initially we did a lot of uh, commercials and stuff like that, you know, right? and then slowly start to get into movies. I remember our, our first big movie uh, was Piranha, I believe, and then uh, Spy Kids, we were happy, mm -hmm. and then a really, really big movie was Men in Black. And wow. we were, yeah, yeah, and we were Men so happy. Black I think two? It, two uh was it two it's 2011 whichever one was that is it two yeah i think either, yeah I, I don't think it was one but i think it was yeah. maybe two yeah yeah um and then you know and then our first marvel one uh captain america the first one came in and we were like very happy with that so wait know? wait when when these big movies come in yeah don't um do they have to send people to kind of check on your facility i mean how can they just yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so i mean Tell me about that uh yeah um for the first captain america one uh now that i think back at it look back at it uh someone outsourced it to someone who shouldn't have and they outsourced it to another you know and so somehow we got like you know five or seven shots you know just like tiny wow. little things so in it's it on the, from the side you didn't get yeah 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 not you know um and then i think after that uh casey started to get a lot of ass like hey are you uh you know uh, Marvel certified um, and at the time we weren't so Andy worked hard to do that he bought the insurance and wow. uh, you know arranged for the uh, uh, inspectors to come here and, and get us certified so that was a big step um, and then Casey pushed for that for years actually um, I can't remember when we got certified like in 2014 or, or 13 or something like that did, did, do you um, think that certification helped with other work because did you tell other people hey we're like Marvel certified yeah 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 yeah. because later when Disney acquired it uh we start to get all of anything under Disney we were able to and then uh from there we jumped over to Sony certification which was a piece of cake and then Fox because once you get certified with one guy the, the other wow. guys look at it and then they're like all right you know um and then so they kind of rely on each other and and, and give you a yeah, yeah, it's a precedent. So, so once you get uh, certified by one of them, uh, the other three or four uh, is it gets a little bit easier. You know? Was at any time did um, you know a labor um, was was any labor concerns um, from these companies? No, no. I mean, they were all good. Uh, but 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 the funny thing is, Apple came in and failed us, and that was a pretty funny thing too. Why? What happened? Uh, so so. Um, so when Apple came in and inspected us, what we do is I, I set up the system where at night um, we have a key hanging uh, in, the, in the basement so that the employees can leave whenever they want, mm -hmm. right, at night. Um, but when Apple came in and inspected us, they saw that key there. They're like, how come they can't leave without the key? And, you know, as like in Vietnam, um, we don't have uh, you know, a fingerprint system that's reliable yet because there's power outage a lot. Right, right. And if a power outage goes out, you can't lift up the, the door. So I'd they rather must, have a, a... They must think so, you're just bullshitting. Like, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like they didn't, he, the, the inspector didn't say anything. Uh, uh, three days later, he reported that we failed. And he goes, uh, employer set up so that, uh, you know, like, uh, you can it, 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 slaves and yeah, exactly. Wow. It's possible that they, you know, they, they take the key away at night and then lock the employees up at night. Yeah, it's in a report. How this and is was, real. It was crazy. I, I, yeah. And I was like blown away. I was like, Oh my God, these guys are serious. So, you know, and, well, and I mean, it was you, fun. you think about like the sort of like the Western perception of, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. See right? a key hang up from a string, yeah. and it's like it's ghetto kind of, you know, and and and, it's and ghetto I, and suspect, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But for me, I mean, all of our employees here, they love that system because it gives them complete freedom. They, they don't have to deal with electronics. Oh, ironic. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when I told everyone here uh, that we fell because everyone laughed their asses off, you know, like wow, Dude, this wow. is a f yeah. They they go it, nothing could be further from the truth, you know, like. <laughs> Like, like how, how much freedom we have at this company, you know, <laughs> you know, but you know, it is. And, and, and so, uh, you know, and, and plus I joked, uh, and what, there was one joke that took precedent before that, because, uh, the guy asked us, uh, well, do you have any, um, safeguards where if there's a leak, how do you deal with employees? Right. But what kind what, what, what leak, like a water leak? I mean, what, no, what kind of, no, 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 no. Like a content leak? leak, content leak. Got you know? it. Got it. Got it. So, and, and, and our contracts, I think it's like, which is like 5,000, 4,000, $5,000, you know, like that time, they gotta, yeah. yeah, yeah. In our contract, if they leak out something, they gotta pay, you know, and, but I, I joked, uh, with the guy, you know, I go, yeah, if they leak, we're going to sue them for their, uh, mama's, uh, and their parents' houses. Right. Wow. And, and I don't think he got the joke because the joke was kind of like, wait, you know, wait, who did, you, who did you joke to the inspector? The inspector. Or? Yeah. 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 The Apple inspector. And I don't think he got the joke because in Vietnam, everyone lives with their parents until they get married. Right. So I can't say I sue them for their houses because they don't live right, in their own houses. Right, right, right. So I go, I sue them for their parents' houses. So, so in the report, <laughs> it says that, uh, yeah, the, the owner, uh, makes threats, uh, even against the artist's, uh, parents. Holy shit. And <laughs> it was totally taken out of context, you know, but it was a joke, you know, it was like, you know, I, but you know, I, so when you look back so it's actually those two factors why we we we, we failed the apple you know and, and then did you ever go back and get re nah, it's, for apple no nah, it's not it wasn't worth it yeah yeah you wow. know, for us yeah because we got we got i mean for me it wasn't because we get a lot of work and apple wants you to uh close off one whole separate room for their stuff only and what what kind of content does apple sort like, of give like, you like if they had the new iPhone out and you know, you want to do a, you know, oh. do touch up for that, you know, whatever, you know, VFX on there, that's the cleanup work or whatever. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And they don't want their products leaking out. You know. Wow. So, so interesting. Okay. So you get yeah. certified for, for Marvel and then what, what kind of developments happen after that? It opens up. So, yeah. I mean, new. yeah. Yeah. From then on, we, we pretty much worked on every single Marvel movie that you've seen after 2014 or 15, whenever we got, you know, so, you know, all the movies, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, I don't know, you name it, uh, Black Panther, um, you know, so all the Avengers. Yeah. During this whole time, while you're doing all these big movies and, you know, are you still supporting the Vietnamese film industry, the local market? So I, yeah, yeah. And so, so we kept breaking even all the way till 2011 or 12. And then when we started to get American work, I started to wean off on local work here, you know, and then now it's like, okay, every year I, you know, even though we, we lose money every time we do a local movie, um, I tell myself, okay, we'll do one, maybe two movies a year just to help out, you know, and, and stay connected, you know, and we don't want to totally abandon. So, so that's what we do. Way you know, of giving like every, back to the um, yeah, local market. And, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and, and you know, uh, when we do outsource work for all these other movies in the U.S., we never, you know, the artist never gets their names in their movies, you know. it's We're always, because we're always a subcontract company. So yeah, but if you're even though we do market, a lot of, yeah, even though we do a lot of work in these big movies, we never get our name in it. Right. So in these local movies, when we do, you know, they, the artists get to put their name in it. And it's, you know, it's something fun for them. Right, right, right. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool. So you get to do both and uh, yeah. works out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, okay. So then what about the sort of the direction of the company as you're going through, you know, all of this heavy kind of growing, um, you, you know, do, do you, are you really sort of thinking about um, doing this for the next, you know, 20, 30 yeah, years? Sure. I mean, what, what happened? 
so so as as you know i mean uh, vfx is something that uh it, it, it was interesting for a while but it was never like a diehard passion you know and you know um you know uh, animation or making toys you know it, so toys is my other passion and and so that that's when in 2015 when we start to get a little bit more comfortable i start to divert uh, any profit that i had into like a you know uh, an extra team to, to start to work on our own ip or okay you know, what so yeah, what yeah. inspired that what like tell me about the whole journey of you deciding to kind of um take that next step into toys yeah well i mean it's still the idea of wanting to 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 do something that's for vietnam related to vietnam and ip for for vietnam you know um and and i i thought you know we would mimic what disney did uh, disney, okay. disney took uh existing uh folklore IP. and yeah, yeah and turned it into his own design and claimed it as their own so IP. what was like, the first step like you know you, you're doing marvel you're having the success of um working yeah. with studios in america but then so what's this sort of like the first thing you do uh, on the toys. The, the first thing I did was ask everyone uh, what would be a good story to do as, as a toy. And everyone, you know, all said something to it. And so that's what we did. That was our first toy uh, or design that we, you know, so. Uh, How did you put that together? I, I did the first initial uh, designs and mock ups, and then I slowly had one or two, uh, you know, students. Um, Wait, what there do you was mean students. Uh, what, where, where are you getting these students from? Uh, from the teach the university that I teach, RMIT. I teach, uh, you know, part time. Yeah. And, you know, How, tell yeah. me about the. Well, I'm sorry to segue, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. tell me about so, that. So, so there's a uh, Australian university here that I've been teaching part time uh, for or since 2006. That's how I, uh, you know, was able to sustain myself for the first early years. Um, and then, you know, slowly, I, I, you know, whichever students were interested in the VFX or just animation. Uh, I would hire them. So we have about oh, maybe wow. 30, 30 RMIT students here working at the company. Um, so that you basically recruited the, the, the best and the brightest from, from your class. Well, not always the best and the brightest, but usually the most passionate or the oh, ones wow. who, I mean, and then, you know, some of them happen to be the best and the brightest, but uh, for so me, you, whoever has the most sort of like uh, passion or they're really into this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like whoever bugs me more than three times, like, Hey, how come, you know, you have an opening, you know, I go, okay, that's the guy I want, you know, wow. versus yeah. who's good. You know I mean? It's, I, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to, to hire who's good um, sometimes because, you know, they, they tend to either join and then leave after a couple of, you know, uh, months or something, you know, but the guy who bugs me, who says, Hey, I want to do this. I want to be, you know, part of your team. Uh, that's usually the guy who, who really stays a long time and who's passionate, you know, and, and gives it, you know, his all. And, and it's really helpful in the long run. Right. That's a, that's a good litmus test, right? The guys yeah, that yeah. really bug yeah. you in and just really want to be there. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. you, you know, you, you always say that you can train somebody who's mediocre. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you, you uh, tell, tell me about that kind of that ethos, that philosophy you have. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've noticed, you know, um, if someone's really talented, uh, but they don't show a lot of interest, uh, they can be with you for a couple months, a, a year or two max, and then they'll jump, you know, in, at least in Vietnam, that's the culture. Um, so it's a waste of time and resources because you, you, you spend so much time training them and then they just go somewhere else. Uh, but the guy who bugs you, and I don't really look at talent, he could be good, he, can, he, don't, he, don't, he don't have to, you know, but in the long run, you you save money and resources because all that knowledge that he accumulates even though he's not that good he, he'll he'll always constantly be there and, and and help you out with the company right so so in the long run you you make out more than the guy who's super talented but who'll leave you in a year or two interesting yeah yeah so the mediocre guy who really loves to be at your company for me i found that yeah in the long run it's, it's a lot better you know, but, and then also if you get a superstar who's really right. good and who loves the company, that's, right. that's, right. that's all the more better. Yeah. And yeah, those are the guys who help drive the company too. You know, it, so you, you, you take him from all sorts of walks of life, you know, uh, the medium talented versus the super talented, but the, the common denominator has to be the passion to be here, the want to be here. Yeah. Cause that will take you to the finish line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I, yeah, I know a lot, a lot of other companies try to hire the best and that's fine. That it's just different modes, right? But the way we have it set up here, this seems to work for us. That's all. I'm, yeah. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously Google, Apple, they always try to hire the best and whether they leave or not, that's up to them, you know, but for us in Vietnam, it's this present condition that seems to work for me.
Yeah, that makes perfect sense because it seems like anybody who has the heart to be there, uh, yeah. they'll, they'll work through it thick and thin. You know, yeah. just strive and, and, and make the, the work that they do much better day day in and day out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. tweeting. Um, what is that? So it's it's uh, it's a f Vietnamese uh, folklore. Um, talks about the mountain god and the sea god. Uh, you know, competing for uh, Vu Hung, uh, the king's daughter. Right. Uh, you know, and then so Vu Hung says, whoever brings me these, he lists out a bunch of gifts. Uh, whoever uh, can give me these. Uh, First, win my daughter, and the mountain god wins. Got it. And, and so, so, how many yeah. how many characters uh, did you uh, first include in that design? I mean, what exactly did you manifest uh, into toys? How did you design it? Yes. Yeah, so, how did so, you come about like the, the the toy set? Like, what what kind of like decisions and and thinking? Okay. Yeah. 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 So so the 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 the, the primary thing for me was I saw how uh, DC and Marvel did in the early days where they use very simple, basic color schemes, you know, and, and that stuck like the early Superman and Batman, it, it was just three colors, right? So I wanted our characters to be like that so that it can basic. like, uh, yeah, basic, you know, and then later on, you can go into the dark and grunge and detail stuff, right? But um, so that was uh, what I, uh, you know, initially thought and so what we did was we went on Google and if you type in something, right. And I told my artist who was helping me at the time, let's take all of these images and average it out and, and get the average of all of these guys. And that would be our, uh, you know, our, our design language. Um, and so that's what all of our characters, what we did is we would Google something and we would get the culmination of everyone's kind of like uh, impression of what that character is and try to give an average and simplified version of those characters, you know, so, and, and that seems to work. So we're like the average kind of snapshot of what everyone thinks that character is. Uh, and, and so now what we're seeing now is after our characters, all of our characters been out for a while, uh, newer artists, when they design, it, it's like, they're copying us now. We're like, we're like the, the you know, uh, the, the, the go-to design. So if you look at Tan Young, you'll see that a lot of these later artists are using kind of like our scheme and everything, which is, you know, kind of flattering. flattering and cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think, you know, that was a good decision uh, that we made early on, you know, and, and, and then that's helped uh, have our IP kind of grow on people quicker. Right. Yeah. So how many years yeah. has that been now? Since that? Uh, so we started in 2015. So probably five years five now. Years. That wow. It's been, a, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, what's yeah. happened um, since then? What, what other developments um, have you so, done? So so our toy group has gone up to about 14, 15 people. We have, we have 14, 15 designers. Um, we also have a paint company, uh, a paint company that does uh, paint injection molding. There's about seven or eight people at the factory that creates our toys. Um, you know, we've, we've launched out a couple of toy lines already. We have a, you know, and we're all on the, uh, you know, like Lazada, Tiki, uh, all the online shopping places. Uh, we're in bookstores here in Vietnam. What, what other lines do you have um, for the local market in Vietnam? Uh, so there's the, the original one where it's kind of uh, like there's a, uh, you know, the, 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 the toy characters with the books um, and, and there's a little game map that you can play like a board game and then it comes included. So we have something to eat We have Oka Lak Long Wong, which is the Adam and Eve Vietnamese story. Right. We have Tan Yang, Tan Yang, which is the Jesus story version of Vietnam, uh, Vietnamese. And then we also have Hai Ba Jung. So those oh, that, that, that's interesting that you bring up these um, these IPs that are existing, but I, I can't help to think how related they are to sort of these. You just brought up like these Western biblical um, connections, right? You said Adam and Eve. You said the Jesus. Can you go into that? Yeah. That's what is that? Yeah, about? it's it's it, there's there's always some kind of parallel, right? Um, like. Oka Lok Long Wong is the Adam and Eve story. Like it's, clearly. Well, I mean, there's variations, obviously, because uh, Oka Lok Long Wong had, uh, you know, 100 kids. But um, their stories, they had to split up, right? The, the kids had to split up. And that explains the different people all over the world. Uh, you know, Adam and Eve with their kids splitting up, you know, uh, spreading across the world. So it's like uh, a yeah. creation story. Like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. An origin story for the Vietnamese people. 
Yeah, yeah. And then you have Tan Yong, which is uh, like the Jesus story, right? Tan Yong's mom was a virgin birth. He was virgin birth. Uh, his dad was the, you know, God. God. He's the son of God. He where came do you, down. Where do you oh, think yeah, that, it, how, how do you think that's all connected? I mean, because these uh, virgins have yeah. been around for hundreds of years and thousands of yeah, years. Yeah, there's got to be from, you know, like a proto-culture, a proto-religion from a long time ago, like thousands and thousands before Jesus, you know, and so it all came br branching off. You know, and then trickled down to the Vietnamese culture. Yeah. Wow. wow. Gotta be, so you're yeah. saying somewhere way before the yeah. Jesus story, the, the Vietnamese Jesus story, like all of it is tied to some original. Um, is, yeah. I haven't done deep research like that, but yeah. I, I, you know, there's got to be, uh, you know, and then, you know, Tan Yong like saved his people and then wow. went up back to his dad to live, you know. Wow. Uh, that's you know. mind blowing. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and then, th yeah, Tam Cam is the uh, Cinderella story, I believe it is. No, not the Cinderella, I'm sorry. Uh, what's what's the other one? No, yeah, this is a Cinderella story. Yeah, Tam Cam's a Cinderella yeah, story. And, and yeah, that's yeah. fairly recent, you know, a few hundred yeah. years, maybe, yeah. you know, I think Cinderella is maybe, maybe a German or, you know, yeah. uh, and, Aesop and, or something like that. And Tat San is the Tarzan story, you know, it, it even sounds the same, Tat, you, tat, tat San. Tarzan. Do you think yeah. that that one was taken from Tarzan? It's, a, it's so much of a coincidence. You know, Taksan is a jungle guy who, you know, uh, a wilderness guy, right? Yeah. Taksan, I mean, how close is Tarzan? Taksan? But you does Taksan I mean? mean something? I, mean? I'm not sure if, if you know, but, yeah, but it's phonetically, just, it just yeah, phonetically, yeah, 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 yeah. It is too much of a coincidence, you know? Yeah. Like, why not Tatdeng or, you know, Tatjang or I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. But so yeah, I mean, so there's all these folklore uh, stories that has parallels in the Western, you know, side. Yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then so, what other do you hope to sort of take that toy, um, your toy experience, into you know bigger markets like how you got started with the animation? I mean, you go from a local market to more international waters. I mean, there's no, the, I, I don't think there, this has international appeal. We're not doing this for the international market. It's, market this is yeah. really more for Vietnam. You know, no, my, my, market. yeah, my, 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 my dream passion, whatever, is just to have a good set of IPs for Vietnam, you know, uh, you know, and, and based off of our history, if that's yeah. good enough. You know, yeah. What, so what kind of, it sounds like you have, Okay, you said 14, 15 designers and you probably have some ad admin people, but what sort of like specialties are you um, working on uh, for the toy um, business? Is it just the design aspect, the manufacturing aspect? What so, yeah, I mean, so, so over the years, you know, since I think in my opinion, we have some of the best uh, students coming from the university. Uh, we're, they're just really good. Um, so we're, we've taken on, uh, you know, jobs as design, toy designers too. So, you know, um, uh, and I've been trying to push for, uh, you know, to see um, what other companies uh, need design services. Because I've, I've seen there's companies, there's a company here that does shoe design and they have like 250 people and they design shoes and, and, and out, you know, take care of the outsourcing part. And I'm, I'm thinking there's no reason why the toy industry uh, can't follow this model, right? Because like I know a lot of, yeah, I know a lot of toy, yeah, toy owners uh, who have their IPs, but they're they're either they don't have the time or the 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 will or whatever resources uh, to design toys, you know. So I think if you can, if they can outsource that part, then you know we love designing toys here. And, and so far, internationally yeah. or just for the internationally that part, yeah, 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 yeah. So. So that's, uh, you know, the, the company, um, what we, we set up to do, uh, Tochirama. So that's our design branch that does that, you know, uh, design part you know, for, for. Uh, so, so there's in essence two companies then. There's a local company that you have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the name of the local company? And then so the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the local company is called Vantit, V-A-N-T-I-C-H. Uh, and that yeah. handles the local market. Uh, yeah, the local IP. Local IPs local yeah, folklore, yeah. Myth, myths, yeah. legends of, of Vietnam. And yeah. then you have an international side called Tochi yeah. Rama, you said? Yep, Tochi okay. Rama. Yeah, and, yeah. and Tochi Rama handles 
design manufacturing or just design or like what is what do they do design and then you know we we've taken on a couple of small jobs that has you know that does a uh, smaller volume that we can handle and eventually we want to grow to to handle bigger volume right but but smaller you know moqs like 5000 or less uh then we 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 can manage and and, and help them with the process you know right. we're able to do that yeah yeah and then wow. our, our our yeah and then our also our our factory which we take on work um is called uh, MLF, which is Myth, Legends, and uh, Fables. Uh, you know, so that does all of just a pure manufacturing, uh, you know, and production Got side. It. So, Got so it. if there's a company that needs just pure production, uh, then 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 it does that. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. And what about the the local market? Is there a growing uh, scene for um, animation uh, feature films or animated? Uh, uh it's getting it's getting stronger the episodes but yeah but the problem is the you know the 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 kids here are are learning english at a very fast rate and uh (laughs) and and the you know any animation coming this is way too good right so it's going to be hard to try to catch up with that um i think comics have a better uh uh you know, chance, uh, at, you know, and, and there are some successful comic uh, IPs. Uh, like uh, that like are, local yeah. domestic yeah, local. comics? Like, yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. Like from, from, uh, from Vietnamese comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you some, would take yeah. that or somebody should take that and, and sort of run with that local comics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's a, a, so I think Tao Bay Mao is one of them, uh, you know, it's something Jim Eng or something like that, you know, and, and so we're, we're, we're kind of on that path too with our uh, local stuff. So we do a lot of comics. So our, our Facebook page is, is, is growing. What's your uh, Facebook you know. page? Uh, it's uh, Vangtit. Uh, you know, um, if you just go to a, a Facebook, you know, Vangtit, uh, uh, then, you know, you can find it. Uh, you know, we, we, we do like a daily comic thing. And, 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 and the group is going. We, I think we have like about 80,000 uh, followers now. You know, wow. So, wow. so it's not, a yeah. substantial amount. Yeah. 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 And then so you... Well, are going to take that sort of that content, that comic strip content, and then produce toys from it, or like, what's the plan for that? Yeah, so for the for the comics, uh, that's just to get into people's uh, uh, hearts and minds. Co- yeah, hearts and minds, and and you know, I, we I think we have those who do follow it. They're really involved into it. They like it. You know, I mean, it, it's the content's getting better every day. It's for ours to practice. Uh, you know, um, and. Eventually, I think that, you know, if, if you, if you, we can work it up to like a couple hundred thousand uh, subscribers, then it's a lot easier. We have a platform to, uh, you know, every time we have a toy that comes out, uh, the announcement, it gets easier. You know, uh, if, if you just count for like 0.5% of that, then it, you know, with a couple hundred thousand people, then, then uh, yeah. it's a good way to promote, promote our toys. Yeah. So, okay. So I want to talk about the future with, with toys and the yeah. digital space and, and all of the tie-ins that uh, go from sort of uh, content on, on, on the screen to um, tactile toys. What's the projection, sort of the trajectory that you think is happening in Vietnam um, for the market, the toy market? Like there's is a massive growth. I mean, are the kids more digital? How does this all play out? I yeah, I mean, I I, I think we're going to be like in the future. We're going to be like Hong Kong and Singapore, you know. Um, so uh, there's going to be more toy collectors, I think, uh, more digital, uh, you know, people online watching YouTube and stuff like that. So all, all, everything is going to grow. Uh, I don't think the physical toy will ever die out. You know, there's there's people who always love the physical side to it. You know, like for for me, like for my toy collection, um, I don't I don't you know, no matter how strong the digital gets, I always want the physical part too, you know, so this, there's a, you know, a lot of people like that, you, you, you know, so I anticipate it just getting stronger and stronger every day with Vietnam with 90, you know, hundred million people now. And, and, and just with more buying power. Yeah. You just, know, you know, what's weird is um, my son, yeah. he doesn't like to watch TV like my daughter, yeah. but he yeah, likes yeah. to play with yeah. toys. That's all. Yeah, I mean. yeah. See, all- yeah. 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 Play with toys, yeah. and it's the weirdest yeah. thing. I never would have imagined that you know yeah. kids will pick tactile toys over digital. But you know, we'll we'll have the TV running, and yeah. Mia would just sort of keep her eyes glued on the TV, yeah. but Luca would just sort of like 
just play with toys and not, not even pay attention to the digital screen. And he always yeah. has to have a toy. Even when we take yeah. him to the park, he yeah, yeah. always needs to bring one or yeah. two cars with him. This is the weirdest yeah, yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Because, I mean, and kids like that, like, think in three-dimensional space. Yeah. They need to see things rotate in front of them, you know, things sure. like that. So, so yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's a very important uh, part that I don't think will ever die out, you know. Yeah, well, that's yeah, good. Yeah. It's good to yeah. know. T tell me about your yeah. toy collection. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Talk about it. Uh, like, what, what, like, okay, how, like, when you started buying toys, like, what was going on in your mind? You just bought a bunch of toys? I mean, did you care about Our, it or era? Yeah. Or I, well, I have an OCD where if I buy one uh, toy, or to I have to have the whole collection. I, I can't just buy one member of the whole toy. So, you know, um, like, so if I have like the Thundercats, uh, then I have to have the whole Thundercats uh, from, you know, uh, if you could see the Thundercats there, uh, all the Thundercats, or if I have uh, all the GI Joe, I have to have every single version of the G.I. Joe, uh, Transformers. So, you know, all these uh, characters, I have to have, that, you know, wow. Street Fighter. I have to have all 12 original Street Fighter fighters. You know, He-Man, I have to have all the He-Man, you know, so things like that. So, you know, you know and all of these toys uh, are mostly from the 80s uh, that I collect from. That's the time period when we were watching cartoons right, uh, right. that stuck with me. Yeah, so pretty much any other IP after that, uh, it kind of dies out. I rarely pick up any new IPs, only only if I need to do research, like there's like a, a really good design out there or something, then I would buy it, you know, to, to research. You know, but but other than that, yeah, I'm I'm stuck in the uh eighties. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. This is a really exciting because uh if yeah. you can sort of get the the kids in Vietnam excited about um, the myths and the legends and the folklore of Vietnam, the, the culture mm -hmm. will sort of just expand um, over and over and over as they're being exposed to their own um, stories, which is, I think is very important, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're trying to add, you know, a, a more charming side to it and, and you know, uh, with, with better colors and things like that and more unified look and feel to it. Yeah, that's, yeah, you know, I mean, that's our goal. Yeah. It's come a long way um, since, what is it, uh, the Cricket Diaries? Yeah, so high, yeah, yeah. So high, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Um, yeah. I'm so proud of what what you've done, and it's uh, amazing work. Um, yeah. yeah. So, anything yeah. for the future? Uh, I, you know, I mean, no, we just it's just a long, uh, you know, haul for 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 all of this. My, you know, you know, my idea, you know, my my goal is to have the best toy designers uh, in the world. And uh, hopefully the best IP in Vietnam, you know, are, are two of our mission statements for the company, you know. Which so is what? Being the best toy designers uh, in the world, <laughs> which is kind of ambitious, but, you know, it, it gives us something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. And then also to have the, the, the biggest, best IP in Vietnam, you know, uh, are the, the two things that we strive for. Any, any theme parks or movies or anything in the future? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, that's that's you know that's always uh in the back of my head is to have some kind of uh theme park with uh all of our characters you know related to uh, the vietnamese uh uh mythology um if, if you go to the two or three existing ones they always have little hints and traces of it mm. but uh it's not designed in an immersive way uh yeah, that yeah. you would uh, yeah yeah like if you go to disneyland if you go to one area one land it's all around you uh, they don't go all out here you know, it's just like a little painting on a wall and that's it, you know, which doesn't do much for, yeah. for that e yeah, immersive uh, effect. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying that you want to develop into an immersive sort of a theme park that has immersive qualities of the IP all around when you step into a specific sort of IP in the park, right? Yeah, and yeah, you're saying yeah. In Vietnam right now, the local parks don't sort of have this whole- They don't go, yeah, theme. they don't go all out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Couple well, that's a, or, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a that's a thing that hopefully you know you can take it uh, take Vietnam um, in the future. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely would be a fun place to uh, take my kids to. I would love that. Yeah, yeah. That like if you go to like uh, it's a small world in Disneyland, like the the whole thing covers you with it's a small world with music and everything, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know that needs to be done with, with Vietnamese characters yeah. and IPs. Yeah.
Well, this was awesome. I really appreciate your time and um, hopefully we'll catch up in a, you know, catch up again soon and then we'll do this and get, get new updates on um, where the toys and, and, and the animation uh, things that you've done. You know, I, I would love to hear it uh, in a few uh, next year or something. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. All right. Cool. All right. It's been a pleasure. All right. Awesome. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.